Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, it's a little different than normal. That ought not, uh, that ought not slow you down. That ought to lift you up a little bit. Huh? I don't know about you. I invite, I invite the fact that we had special prayer and that men of God got up here and spoke from an anointed place about a sister that we all agree on. I, I believe that was the most biblical thing that I've seen all day. Where we bind together, where we were one mind and one accord, touching the throne room for something that he said he already did. By his stripes, he were healed. Hallelujah. You want to stand for the reading of the word? You get behind the reading of the word. You get behind the word that I preach. I promise you we'll get you out of here before the Bengals come back. They losing right now in case you was wondering. So they're going to have to come back. Yeah. Lord help y'all. Lord help y'all. Huh? I only got two sets of reading, but we're gonna we're gonna hit it like uh like we need to. I'm not trying to get out of the presence of the Lord. Let me tell you something right now. I'm, I hope to God that I'm about to open up your understanding for the moment, the season that we're in, the services and everything that's been going the way it's been going. I appreciate my brothers who are here, those who are visiting tonight. God bless you. Hopefully I do a good enough job, you might come back. If not, God will save you either way. <laughs> Judges chapter 6, starting at verse 1. I'm going to read 16 verses, so you just hang on to, to Judges. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens, which are in the mountains and the caves and strongholds. And, it's, and so it was when Israel had sown, that the Midianite came up, and the Amalekites, and the children of the east, even they came up against them, and they encamped against them, and destroyed the increase of the earth, till thou come unto Gaza, and left no sustenance, <clears throat> their tents, and or for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle, and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers from multitude. For both they and their camels were about without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Church, it was a hard time for everybody. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord of God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But ye have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was an Oprah, and pertained unto Joash the Abizarite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thy, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of? Saying, Did not the Lord bring us from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. You know what that last verse lets me know? At least he was listening to the preached word of God. He brought it back up. What the prophet had said, at least he was listening to the preached word of God. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Matthew chapter 9, verse 2. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their face, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easy to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. 
but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then said he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. Heavenly Father, right now I ask you to anoint my voice, anoint my ears, anoint our voices, Lord, anoint our hearts, anoint our minds, Lord Jesus. Lord, as we begin to break open your word, Lord, as we begin to praise you, Lord, with spoken word, we ask you right now, Lord, to move on us in a mighty way. Let your anointing permeate this place, Lord. Let it be filled in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. If you're going to preach with me, like Brother Don says, if you're not going to preach with me, go ahead and stand up. I want to speak to you for the next few moments, hopefully, from the subject, Tricky Business. Tricky business. Uh, you see my friend up there, he's doing a, a, a 12 or 14 step drop. Now, I picked this because it reminded me of a place that's in Baton Rouge where I used to skateboard when I was a kid. I say that when I was a kid. I started when I was 14 years old. I didn't stop skating. I actually had a board uh, right before Elijah was born. I was about 23, 24 years old. Now, I... <laughs> I wasn't nowhere near as good. I don't want to mislead nobody. I was probably below average. But I hung out with the best of the best. So. But there's a place in Baton Rouge by where the uh, library is, downtown by the river bank where the USS Kid is. And there's a 12-step there's a drop. And, it, and, and when I was scrolling through pictures today and I was looking for something to put my title on, I saw and it looked like the Mississippi River Bridge behind the man. And it reminded me of somebody that I grew up with. Knowing that that right there is probably one of the hardest things that I've ever tried to do in my life whenever I did try to skateboard because I was already six foot tall. Most great skaters are about 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, I was already above six foot tall. And in this place in Baton Rouge, right there where, where there's some fountains and it's right there by the, and, and, and I grew up there, we used to stay out there all night long, we'd sleep in the van. That's, even when I went to church, we'd get up that next morning after skating all night long and showed up in the church, our eyes all red. My daddy had to smell me, make sure I didn't smell like nothing else but sweat. And, and, and we, we stayed out all night long, but there was a spot where this 12-foot drop, 12-step drop, was, it, was, it was perfect. It was beautiful. We took a lot of videos, a lot of pictures in that one place. But if you're tall, it had this concrete overhang. And every time that I would try to do the drop, I'd have to bail out because every time I would get enough air, my head was about like right here. And I'd have to duck down and I'd almost die going down. So after a while, it stopped. And we called it tricky business. You ever heard the saying, a lot of us, uh, we, we say, you know, hey, you know, navigating a, a divorce is tricky business. A lot of times when you're trying to, to start a new adventure or a, or a new program or anything in your church or anything else, a lot of times when you're dealing with people, it can be very much tricky business. A lot of us, we understand this. How many of you even heard, when I said tricky business, some of y'all looked at me like you ain't never heard that saying before. How many of y'all ever heard the saying of tricky business? Huh? No, I'm not talking about no movie. And now there's a movie out there, tricky business. No. I'm talking about tricky business to the point where we understand something that is tricky, it's either hard or hard to deal with. A lot of us, there, there's a, when you work in the plants, a lot of us work in the plants, there, there are some things where we call it tricky business when you're having a, to swap out certain equipment because it, it's, it, it poses a danger and it poses a, a degree of difficulty. Where if you, didn't, if you just didn't know everything or if you wasn't uh, 20 years in the business or if you weren't just, just uh, totally the right person for the job, then, then it would almost be not even worth trying to do. And, and I want to talk to you about the definition of tricky business. Tricky business is that drop right there. I'm going to tell you right now, the percentage of people who can do that are uh, way fewer than what we were led to believe when I was a kid. <laughs> way fewer. A lot of people who can do those types of tricks, there, there are not as many people out there. And so a lot of people fail to even try to do those tricks. A lot of us, we, we stuck to what we were supposed to do. And I want you to, to bring your attention to the Israelites. They had been pushed into the caves and into the, they, they call them the fortresses or the strongholds. But they had been pushed into the valley. They had been pushed into places where, where it was not hospitable to be able to prosper. The Midianites and all the enemy had taken all of what was good in that place. And in fact, even though they had taken all the good land, they lay in wait and wait for you and wait for Israel to have some type of harvest. And when it would come, they would come down with every bit 
of who they could find. Their partners in the east and the other Amorites and all these people that would come down and they would come to steal what the Israelites had. And it had forced them into a point where Gideon was behind the wine press doing something that wasn't meant to be done behind the wine press. And a lot of us have come here tonight and we have come here and the way things have been going is is we need to wake up and realize that it, for too long we have allowed the enemy to push us into a corner and then all of a sudden now when we're trying to do something that is going to better ourselves and something that's going to further the kingdom, we're hiding behind the wine press. And the problem is we have deemed that tricky business. It's too difficult for us to be able to handle or too difficult for us to be able to go through. Or brother so-and-so is better at reading the word so I can't share nothing about Jesus with nobody. It's too tricky. It's tricky business. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't say it out loud. We, we try to tell ourselves, but we relegate whenever it's time for prayer. Oh, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. But when it's time for prayer, you can always tell who has a private prayer life versus somebody who only prays at church. Oh, I know. Some of y'all think I just don't talk good. This is why I don't pray for people. I used to say some stupid stuff like that before, too. Yeah. The reason why I don't, I'm going to tell you right now, the reason why I don't worship with my eyes closed is because I made some mistakes one time, a couple of times. One time I punched myself in the eye trying to shout with my eyes closed. One time I roped a fake plant that was up on the platform with my tie thinking I was cool. Just a shout, and I roped it and drug it across the front of the church. So I, you won't ever catch Brother Dave praying for you. And I'm sorry, if you come down front and you get prayer from me, and I'm just like this, my eyes wide open. Because I learned. The problem is, is that none of us want to learn. We don't want to break out of the stronghold in the cave because it's comfortable. We like, we like threshing. We don't, we don't say that. But we like living. This is how I know we like it. We like living below the will of God and our means. Because we'll live in comfort and talk bad about the Midianites. Huh? You know, the only reason I ain't moving up in the world is because the government, the president, the job, the boss. Who do you belong to in the first place? He said it earlier. Are you a king's kid? Or is it the will of God that all that none should perish? then why in the world you keep telling everybody it's drugs that's keeping your kid from being saved? It, oh, I done stepped in. I felt that. I done stepped into something. You keep blaming every little old thing. It's alcohol that's holding me back. It's my anger. Is, are you a king's kid or not? Did not God come to give you peace? And that Did he not come to give you a life and that much more abundantly? And the problem is, is we're worried about all these little things and we're hiding behind the wine press and we have considered ourselves just to be some old regular folk. And everything that Brother Don's talking about and everything that Brother Budwine and all them that spoke about tonight and everybody that gave me a good word one time, all they're talking about stuff is tricky business. I can't quite navigate. It's a little too hard for me to take care of. I either can't handle the stress. How many of us have quit church? Look, look, I don't hurt nobody's feelings. How many of us have quit on God because of something we couldn't handle? Huh? Pe people were talking about me, and I couldn't handle it. And we, we, we dive into our emotions, and we, we put ourselves behind the wine press. And then all of a sudden, when God comes along, let me tell you something right now. I know y'all think that Gideon's special, but God comes along to each and every one of you every day of the Every day that ends in why? Every month of the year, every minute of the day, I promise you, the Spirit of God is moving back and forth through the earth. Uh, I, the Bible said that he's omnipresent. That means that while he moves on me right now here, that if there is a soul in Alaska out in the wilderness right now, if he'll call upon the name of the Lord, oh, y'all don't believe it, I guess, because y'all think that everything got to be happening in order. Listen to me. The definition of tricky business means that you can't quite handle what's about to happen or you can't handle the way it makes you feel. Oh, he said it. He said it. Jesus said it. In this life, it's going to be trouble. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world so you can overcome the world. The problem is we don't want to overcome. We don't want to overcome. You don't really want to overcome. You like, oh, boy, man, help me, Jesus. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be here. I mean, Y'all like being a small church. 
I felt that in the Holy Ghost. You like it small. You like the attention. You like the fact that you know everybody's name. That means you ain't got to get out of your seat and meet no visitor. Huh? Come in, have your donut, have your coffee. Come sit in your seat. Talk to the same old people. Sister Amanda, how you doing? Same old person I talk to all the time. High five this person, high five that person because it's comfortable. Because it, we can sit behind the wine press and we're still a part of the family of God. He's still an Israelite. Huh? But then when you start to, ooh, oh, I feel it in the Holy Spirit. Whenever we start to get to the point where we got to stretch ourselves, we start to make excuses. Oh, I'm the least of my household. My family's the least in Israel. In other words, not only am I last, but I'm the last of the last. And all of a sudden, God come here tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. God come here tonight to tell you you are a mighty man of valor. And the problem with that is, is our definition ain't right. We ain't got the right definition. Mighty man of valor only is in the Bible. God bless him. Boy, that was Gideon. That's a good little Sunday school lesson, Pastor. Tell us about the trumpets in the, in, in the, uh, in the jar with the uh, candle in it. Tell us about slipping up on the enemy and hearing about the dream and knowing how good it makes everybody feel. Ooh, don't you feel the fleas on when we talk about how, how he's going to take them all down with less than. Let me tell you something right now. It all started back whenever Israel listened to the preach word of God and did nothing. And then the interpretation of the preach word of God was this. I hear you, Pastor, but if all that was true, how come we don't see the miracles right now? Oh, I stepped into it. I felt that. Here we are in the present day. When's the last time you seen blind eyes open? Oh, here we go. We're attacking Christianity right now. I'm going to tell you right now, we ought to attack ourselves enough. We ought to attack ourselves enough. Most of us are so scared behind the wine press that if a blind person came by, we'd play dead. I didn't see him, Lord. If he'd have came by, I'd have prayed for him, but I didn't see him. I was taking a nap. I was, I was, I was busy. I was trying to rest. You know, the Bible said you got to rest on the Sabbath, you know. I was, trying to, I was trying to observe the Sabbath day, Lord. I couldn't reach that person. I couldn't, you know, because I'm going to tell you right now, there are so many sick and wounded people in the world right now. And I, 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 was, reading, I was listening to my own self preach. I know that sounds crazy. But I was listening to my own self preach earlier today, and I was making some little clips and all that like I do sometime on my Sunday. And, and, and all of a sudden, I said something, and I know it's a shock, but I had to amen myself. <laughs> Not because I thought I was good, but because I didn't know where it came from. Because it was good. It had to come from God. I couldn't have thought of nothing that good. And I started to think about it. And I would said something. We had talked about it before, and I had talked to somebody else about it. But you know where revival comes from? I know we, we want to revive the saints. You know why the saints need to be revived? It's because we ain't been doing our job. That's why we need revival. But, but I get more excited about other things that aren't revival. I get excited by the byproduct of revival. The byproduct about revival is workers in the harvest. And that means we have workers. The Bible said that the workers are few. Pray for the Lord, to the Lord of the harvest to send workers. The reason why we got to get revived and remind ourselves that we belong out on the battlefield and not behind the wine press is because there is a great harvest. And the harvest brings on signs, miracles, and wonders. I can help you real quick. The reason why there are so many sick and lame and people in the world is because God, he said it earlier, is preparing his bride so that he can come back and take him to heaven. And a lot of us won't even get into the church house until we get sick. Huh? We won't even speak the name of Jesus unless our son get a bad grade or he tries to go run off and do something stupid or he smoke a little dope. All of a sudden we get a little, we get a little problem. We got people in our, in our lives all of a sudden. We won't even turn to God. The reason why Israel was hiding behind a wine press in the first place is because God put them there. Because until they was in the strongholds and then until they were getting all their product and everything they were trying to produce, until it was getting stole from them, they would not call on the name of the Lord. The, the most of us, the most of us, have gotten to the place where we see Gideon as a fairy tale and not the road map that it was intended to be. Listen to me, Gideon wasn't perfect. He, no, he was a mighty man of valor because God said he was. 
Some of y'all walking around with the spirit of God on the inside of you, and you every time you turn around, you listen to anything anybody says about you. Huh? You ain't nothing but poor white trash. You ain't nothing but this and that. You ain't nothing but low down. You ain't never going to be nobody. Your mama wasn't nobody, and your mama's mama wasn't nobody, and so you ain't never going to be nobody. You done messed up. You got three felonies. You got all these things going against you. And the problem is you listen to all that, but yet you'll sit there and you'll clap when they say that you are beautifully and wonderfully made. That said that the same spirit that be on the inside of you, whenever Jesus called back your body, you know what you're going to do? You're going to get up and be gone and, and reap your heavenly reward. We're all about that heavenly reward. But we ain't nothing about being on earth and living it out the kingdom of heaven. We all love that going to heaven business, but don't, nobody want to speak to the blind man and tell him to be healed. Nobody want to move on down to town. Listen to me. When he empowered them, he sent them out two by two. All right? And he gave them power over all manner of disease and all spirits. And when they came back, they was amazed that everything was obeying them. The problem is, is we don't want to get out of our own neighborhood anyway. We don't want to move nowhere. We ain't trying to lay hands on the sick. You know why? Because you are deathly afraid that God won't do it. Deathly afraid. Then they're going to call you a false prophet. Huh? Call you a non-Christian. They're going to tear you apart. We're already doing that ourselves. Too many of us now, are, we just, we just love, we'll sit there and listen to the preach word of God, play her on our phones. We'll sit back and just wonder, oh, well, whenever he gets done, then we'll be able to go by Sonic, get a hamburger, and go home. And then we'll be able to do whatever, and we'll come back on Wednesday night and try it again. Let me tell you something right now. If you can't walk out of here under the power of the Holy Ghost, ready to take the world by storm, then church ain't doing you nothing. We just wasting your time. Oh, I know that sounds a little strong. I'm going to tell you right now. If when I leave here tonight that I can't call up my sons or daughters and tell them with conviction that as far as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord and that no matter of devil that come against me will prosper, no matter what weapon he uses, no matter what they say about me, boy, they're going to say everything. He's going to throw every dart, but it said that I will survive. Some of y'all need to get Aretha in y'all and you go ahead and remind yourself, I will survive. I'm going to survive. I'm going to come out on top. I'm coming out of this. I'm moving forward. Well, y'all love that. Y'all love that tricky business. Use it. You know, the, the, the strong part about what I love about definition, I love all that. You know that Gideon got a new name given to him by fire. I said this is the reason why this, this message kicked off the other day when I gave you that word. It's been stuck in me hard. Jerubamah. He said, let Baal contend. He said it earlier. Y'all been being chased by the devil, all right, because he's out there seeking whom he may devour, all right. Some of y'all ain't hard to find. Huh? Some of us out on the corner with a sign, come and get me. Huh? Here I am. Let me drink a couple more. Let me, let me do a couple more. Let me say a couple more words. And then he just, he, he can't even help but find you on the corner. Huh? He ain't even got to seek hard no more. We don't make it easy. We don't make it hard on him. We make it easy on him. Every time we turn around, we mess up. And then when we mess up, we tell everybody we messed up. Instead of telling Jesus, I'm sorry. Forgive myself, Lord. Forgive me. Let me move on with my life. Get over yourself and move on in the Holy Ghost. But we don't do that. I messed up, sister. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. It's one of the biggest lies we ever told ourselves in the first. I don't know what to do. Most of y'all know for a fact that if you would just pray back through, that's one of them things, pray back through and go ahead and do what you know to do is right. You know one of the biggest sins is going to send people to hell? The Bible says if you know to do good and you do it not, it is a sin. That and unforgiveness. That's the two big, oh, I know y'all thought it was homosexuality, you thought it was murder and all that. I'm going to tell you right now, what's going to get more people is unforgiveness and knowing to do right and not doing it. But you know why? Because we stuck behind the wine press feeling sorry for ourselves. And every time they come, I can just hear Gideon, he sounded pitiful to me after they uncovered, told him he was a mighty man of valor. He said, well, if he brought us out of Egypt, if he did all that for Brother Don, if he did it for Brother Bud Wine, if he did it for Sister Odell, if he did it for them, how come I don't see the miracle on my life? It's because your definition has changed. Because every time you try to move forward, it's tricky business. You know what I love about definitions, though, especially terms and phrases? Well, I pick with the kids sometimes. We make up our own stuff. You know, they got all these little words they use, like bussing and all that. I come up with my own stuff. 
I make my own words up, my own little saying, and I tell them what it means. So now my girl, she'll text me sometime and tell me I have the sobiest day. Y'all don't know what that means. That's the inside thing. But that means to have a great day. That's not even a real word. It's not even in the uh, Bible. It's not in the Bible, not in the dictionary, it's nowhere. It's, I made that up. But you know what? We do the same thing. We use the Bible, and we make up our own little definitions. And we've been stuck in sin, stuck in pain, stuck in problems the whole time, but yet we won't revisit the definition. We won't go back to the word like he said. We won't go back and read it again for ourselves. Oh, we heard somebody say it one time, and we watched a video on, on TikTok, and we seen all this guy, and he, he broke the word down for me, but I don't even know where to find that in the Bible. But I heard it on TikTok, so it must be true. But the definition is what's holding you back. See, tricky business, when I was growing up, meant something that was kind of hard to navigate. In fact, if you wasn't really good at it, you probably wouldn't even do it in your L. But I read something early today that made me laugh. Y'all ever heard that Urban Dictionary? I don't, I don't suggest going to read it because it got a lot of crazy stuff in there. But I was looking up the meaning of tricky business, and I seen it pop up, and I went down the rabbit hole. I, I wish I hadn't until, until God just kind of hit me in my forehead, and he said, hey, he said, the problem is the new term tricky business is somebody who can't be stopped. And I started thinking about the word Jerubal. Out of obedience, mighty man of valor went at nighttime, scared. Listen to me. Y'all need to read the word. Y'all need to go back and read Judges. Y'all, Some of y'all looking at me like y'all ain't even heard of Gideon. Go back and read Judges 6, all right? Start and keep reading till you can't stop, all right? That's what I did. You get that name. But he went at night. Told He was told to go tear it all down, cut the grove down, use the wood, make an altar, sacrifice unto God. Oh, we love that part. Huh? Turn from your evil ways. Huh? And he go heal your land. Y'all remember? Y'all know that other scripture? All right. Here we are, and at midnight, at time at night, whenever nobody can see him do it. Listen to me. I'm going to help you real quick. I don't care if you do it tonight in this service or when you get home and you get in your bedroom and you kneel down and you say, God, I was too afraid to do it in front of all those people, but God cleaned me, cleanse me, use me, move me, Lord Jesus. I tell you what I pray all the time. Make me and mold me, Lord. Lord, creating me a clean heart and a right spirit. And you know what I do? I don't do it in front of y'all. Y'all don't want to see me over here crying and spitting and all that, hardly ever. But I do that in my own. I touch God. You know why? Because I touch God because he's the one that said he was going to set me free. He's the one that already set me free. I talked about it this morning. A lot of us talk. We love them rivers and dry places. I do too. I've been dry. I remember traveling on my own, trying to do everything I thought I could do. And all of a sudden, God had to step in and make a highway, just like he did for Moses and all them. Uh, yeah, some of y'all act like y'all don't listen to dotted people. And he had to make a highway just like that. In a moment when I was backed up against it, he did it. But you know what he also did? Whenever I was blessed and I was walking the holy highway and I was doing everything that I could to be everything I could to God and in line up with the word of God, while he blessed me, you know what he did? He blessed me again. And he blessed me over and he blessed me over. And then it didn't matter what happened, who come against me. The darts, it didn't matter if it was at nighttime or daytime. Nothing could harm me. Yeah. Nothing can harm you. I tell you right now, you got to turn it around. Not only do you got to turn it around physically, which means you got to stop being dumb. Stop doing the same old, same old and getting the same thing and thinking something else is going to happen. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're sitting in a seat and you feel like your Christianity has been in trouble all year long and we ain't but in the first month, you need to move seats. You need to sit in a different spot. You need to do something different. My sister right here took a run earlier. I ain't never seen that. Not that I can remember. Do something different. Oh, I know. Y'all know y'all won't run. Y'all don't want to shout in front of nobody else. Listen to me. You need to get over yourself. You know, you know how you get over yourself? You listen to the preached word of God. The prophet told them that th God was going to do it. He was going to bring you out. But all, all, all Gideon heard was is that I heard you, but where are the miracles? Everybody sitting under the sound of my voice and listening online. You are a miracle. You are not only a miracle, but it is a miracle right now that you are not only in this place, but you are listening to the preach word of God. You know what that means? The Bible said that, that you know, those who come to the Father are drawn. Drawn. That means that every moment that the preach word goes out, you are being drawn. 
That means that every time it's time to move for a new season and trying to move out of your situation, God has been pulling and drawing you. And he just says, you know what, if you'll just go and do what I told you to do, why don't you do what you know to do in the first place, and all of a sudden I'll give you a new name. And then that new name comes, it says, Baal contend. You know what Baal needs to do, in other words? Then he needs to just bring it. That's what it really comes down to. You know what, if you've been struggling with whatever you've been struggling with, you need to go ahead and say, it's done tonight, I'll cut it off. I'm no longer doing that. And then whenever you walk out of here, blessed, sanctified, and delivered, you need to go ahead and remind yourself and remind the devil, my new name is, my new name is, is drugs contend with me. Why don't you go ahead and bring what you got? Go ahead and tell everybody what I used to be and who I used to do. Why don't you go ahead and use everything you can against me? Because my new name is I'm covered in the blood and now you can't touch me. You need to get over all that stuff that, that God hasn't done and realize everything he's doing right now. Stand to your feet. I'm done. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. You don't understand what God is doing. Oh, I know, saint of God, it's tricky business. I, I understand that it hadn't worked the last couple of times you've done it. But maybe you ought to wake up and realize that if you want your healing, you want your healing. Look, uh, I, I, give, me, give me three minutes. Three minutes. In Matthew, all right, the reason why I read that scripture, I ain't even touched it yet. Oh, Gideon took up all my time. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is brought an impossibility by man's actions. It's, palsy is impossibility. This, this wasn't a broken arm we could set. Mm -mm. No, this is, this is the palsy. Paralyzation. This is something that, that only God can do. And when he shows up, Jesus says, and this is where we get it from. We, we, we reverse engineer it. He came to God, Jesus, for a healing, but he got forgiveness. At the time, that was equal to salvation. Y'all well, not listening to me. I, I know y'all. They, they, they could not even believe that Jesus could save him. They thought that it was easier for him to heal him than to save him. Here we are in 2023 backwards. You walking in here saved and sanctified, but yet you relegate yourself to be sick, broke down, busted, and disgusted. You'll tell God all day long, I thank you for your salvation, but I can't do nothing with this healing. Oh, yeah, maybe you missed it. Jesus says, is it easier? Ooh. This is where you need to wake up and realize what the new definition is. Is it easier for God to save or to heal? Is it easier? What's easier to God? The question is, nothing is hard for God. Ain't nothing hard for God. Y'all, y'all, how in the world do you feel saved? Do you feel like you got a relationship with God? Even just an ounce? If you've ever been touched one time. If God's ever done anything for you one time. In, all, in order to move forward into the next time, you got to realize there was a first time. And when there's a first time, the second time is old hat. You know what that means? That means if Jesus says that it's okay. He said, you know what? He said, is it easier for me to save you or for me to heal you? Listen to me, church. If you feel like you're saved, then you ought to wake up right now, get out from behind the wine press, and realize that you are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. All it is is a mindset. Gideon had to wake up to the fact that he was a mighty man of valor. But you had to go through some things. He had to go in the middle of the night. And even after he tore it all down, he still had to fleece God. But listen to me. He never stopped moving forward. And every time he moved forward, he realized it was easier to believe that if God said it, I believe it. Listen to me, church. If you got the Holy Ghost, you need to lift your hands up right now and receive healing. Right now. Go ahead and start the music, Mike. Lord, right now, I, I speak healing in this place. There's too many saved people walking around sick. There ain't no reason. It is easy to be healed and saved by Jesus. Well, I don't know about you, but if you're ready for something, if you need prayer, come on down front. Look, we're going to pray for you. We're going to believe God ministers. Look, come on down front. Listen to me, though. God's about to do it. 
God's about to do it in this place. God is about to do it. If you feel like you've been lost, God can save you tonight, and he can heal you from everything that's going on. Hey, if you got to go, God bless you. We all got to get up early in the morning, but I'm not going to leave until he touched me. <laughs>